this is Jason Architect. I'm a building designer and also I've been helping Nigerians build and design their homes, also analyze their building structures for over a decade now. So what are the causes of building collapse we have in Nigeria? Uh, one of the causes will be the lack of building to specifications, including having the structural details and also the soil testing uh, profile for most of these buildings, whereby see people build without knowing the type of soil they are building in, the strength of the foundation, then the load bearing capacity of all the life loads, the, the people who are going to be on this building, they do not actually check for all this. They do not actually check for all these type of details to know the strength of this material. So all this adds up to why building collapses because they do not build to specifications and then they use substantial materials when they are trying to build. To ensure the stability of a building during construction, you have to determine the load bearing capacity of these structures. You do not give a building a weight that is too much that you know that the foundation will not be able to carry. For example, you are having a foundation for for a bungalow, then yet you decided to put on a duplex or you put in another building on top of it. So all this is not actually making sense and it can cause damages to lives and properties. Also, when you are talking about the load bearing capacity of this building, whereby you do not define the tensile strength, the compressions of these materials, the buildings can fail anytime because you do not actually know the durability of this material. Can this material hold on this building for such amount of time? For how long will it be able to hold on this building too? You have to define this. That is where the structural design comes into play to determine the stability of the building. So I uh, mostly hear people say, can the poor maintenance of a building home lead to the building collapse? I would say this, we have uh, stages of building a house, like you first uh, design the structural part of the building, then you build it, then you operate the house by moving in, and then after some while, then you have to demolish it. So the most important parts of this are the, the structural design phase and the building stage. These are the most uh, important part of uh, maintaining a house so mostly the maintenance aspect is not really that important so if you get it wrong from these two stages which is the structural aspect and the building aspect you're 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 going to have a lot of problems maintaining a house can only talk about the outlook of the house maybe the painting is washed the exterior is looking bad like so maintenance of a house does not actually mean the, it's going to affect the building collapse it's going to make the building to collapse so the most important aspect of building the house so that it's going to be very strong is the building stage and the structural design stage when you say how the material selection in building a house affects its stability we we talk about the the structural strength of this material, the load bearing capacity of this material, the water bearing capacity of this material. So you look at this and discover that this type of material, when I use it, is not going to give me the type of strength that is required to hold this building. You do not have to buy substantial materials for this building project. So you know the type of material you're going to choose. If you are doing a kind of uh, maybe a flat roof, we have uh, materials that you are going to use. If it's a decking, we have materials that you are going to use to to cover it up, like the bitumen. So all these uh, materials, you have to determine that. If not, at the end of the day, you discover that all the work you have done won't work out because you have maybe used just the normal concrete to finish the house. So you did not determine the type of material, you did not make research to know the type of material you are going to use that is going to stop water from penetrating the wall 
and a lot of things like that so you have to check all these things all these things will help in the st stability of making a building not to collapse when necessary even in the foundation it can also help where you know that okay this foundation is at so so level and then we have a kind of water capacity inside you have to know all these things that okay for this type of foundation this is the type of uh, design foundation we are going to use maybe we should use a pipe foundation instead of the normal part foundation so all these things you you have to make research and know that this type of material is actually good for this type of thing i'm going to do so all these things helps so when you say how do natural disasters like the earthquakes and the flood and uh, wind storms affect the stability of buildings. Uh, normally, buildings are built to, to withstand this type of natural disaster like the earthquake, fire outbreaks, and a lot of these things. But uh, you find out that most times the buildings are always stressed during this type of period, and it's natural that you. Uh, give way to nature and then <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it uh, in such cases but naturally we design buildings to withstand this but when the the, the, the movement from the strata is too much then you find out that nature is always going to win so for that you can't do anything about it except God willing and it's by your side so we say if a building design can be altered after it's being constructed, uh, yeah, actually, no, you see, a building design cannot be altered. Otherwise, you're causing a, a kind of imposed load on the building. Uh, let's take an example for the recent building collapse we had, which is the Koi building collapse. It was actually designed for a sixth floor, then later they moved it to 12 floors. From 12 floors, they moved it to 15 floors. And then from 15 floors, they moved it to 21 floors. So this kind of building design alteration, whereby from the start, they didn't know that they would alter this building. So the foundation itself was not even designed to carry a 21-story building. They didn't check the foundation depth. It was just designed for the six-story uh, kind of building, which they initially had in mind. So for all this type of thing here, we talk about the building regulations. Maybe they, they were not really imposed on what they need to do. So they just let all this thing happen. So you cannot alter a building after you have done the design stage. Before doing that self, you need to go to the town planning agency. You need to get a building plan also for anything you're altering from a building, either internally or externally. Because at the end of the day, you should not do that. It's illegal. And if the government finds out, I think they are going to demolish your building structure. So you say, how do you inspect the kind of building that has already been built? Like, uh, there are various ways you can expect a building that's already been built to find out if it's actually good enough or stable enough so that you know what uh, measures you're going to take maybe you're trying to buy a property then uh, you can look at the the walls if you see mostly cracks you have to know that there is a kind of load bearing problem for that building you check for the ceilings Maybe the weight of the roof is actually more heavier than the type of building or they have constructed the walls. Like you see it on the walls also, the ceiling will be cracking. Then you look at outside where you have drainages that are overflowing, maybe from the house, it actually soaks the the building walls and also affects the foundation of this building so you check for drainages when you see water is leaking from somewhere you have to check okay is this is there in any pavement that is going to help protect this water that is leaking from getting inside the foundation you have to know all these things well mostly always check for cracks check for cracks uh, where you are trying to inspect any kind of 
property or you want to get check for the cracks so this is very important the difference between a building failure and a building collapse i'll say a building failure is from the design stage whereby you do not get the necessary information i have not made the required research to the type of building you're going to build the location you're going to be building in the building you're designing for like how many people you're you're designing for this build how many people are going to be occupying this how many tv sets are they going to be having so you know the capacity of the building you're going to be designing for then you determine the load bearing capacity of everything that is going to be in this building like knowing the type of foundation you're going to be used the soil type you're going to be making use of like so you determine all these things then all these things is what transmits to what we call the building collapse so when you have not done the proper analyzing and research of what you are going to do you have not even gotten the scope with proper specifications according to the architectural Re registration council of nigeria and building codes you find out that at the end of the day you have a building collapse which will cost lives and properties so all this works hand to hand the building collapse comes from the building design failure so that is just how it is and that is how it works in summary to keep a building safe you have to make sure you have proper background check of everything you want to do also analyzing the building structure you are going to be building in checking for the wind direction the soil type you are going to be using to build your building and then the materials you are going to be using you do not have to cut corners in order to complete a building project make sure you are building the specifications for the concrete make sure make sure you're using the right specification you do not have to reduce the materials just that maybe you're a contractor you need to get more money from the job you reduce the specification you don't have to do that because you're risking the lives of other people who are going to be staying in that building and also for the homeowners also i will say this most of these homeowners do not listen to the professionals in the industry so they just decide to do whatever they feel like their money can do you say okay this building is designed for for only two stories you say no i want you to add three extra and because the other young man is looking for money he just decides to do it regardless of the regulations and the building codes we have had he just does it for the money but at the end of the day we have a very bad story like the one we had for the ecoe building collapse which has killed even the, the building owner and a lot of people. So I'm at 3,000 subscribers now. I'm very, really excited. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been watching, has been liking, has been sharing, and also has been subscribing to the YouTube channel. I want to say God bless you and have a nice day. Take care.